Can you hear those birds? We put up a bird feeder and like the fat little sparrows are all over it and they're just chirping away. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but I finished three more books in the month of July. So I finished six books in July. So I'm going to do another little quick wrap up, a recent reads kind of wrap up for the last three books that I read in July. So the first thing I finished was Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. It is book three in the Throne of Glass series. If you haven't read the series, Throne of Glass, the first book, follows Selena. She is an assassin and she is participating in a competition to become the king's champion to, and free herself from kind of like a being a slave in a mine kind of thing. So this is her chance at freedom from the mine and so she is competing in this, you know, competition, competing in this competition. She She's taking part in this competition to become the king's champion and escape slavery in the mine. The first book wasn't that great. The second two, or the second book and the third book, I liked significantly more um, because that summary from the first book, it really only scratches the surface of what's happening in the series. Of course, it's a seven book series, so you know, you can't really expect too much from the first book, but even like the writing style and the storytelling style and everything gets better between book, between book one and book two, and book three was also good. I think I enjoyed book two more than book three, but I did enjoy book three as well. The next book I finished is actually probably the one that I have the most to say about, and that was Black Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is a fantasy novel. I believe it's a trilogy it's gonna be a trilogy there's two books out there's black sun and then there's fevered star i will start by saying i'm probably not gonna read fevered star i ended up giving this book three stars i think as a book as a whole you know the story the writing style everything would have made it a four star if it weren't for one particular part of the book that I didn't like that kind of brought my enjoyment down to a two star. So I kind of averaged it out and I gave it three stars. So in Black Sun, you're following three main perspectives. You have Narampa, she is a sun priest. You have Shiala, who is a teak sailor, like a captain of a ship. A teak is kind of like a mermaid. And you have Serapio, who is the reason I didn't like this book. <laughs> I like him as a character, but I didn't like what they did with his storyline. I, I I didn't like his storyline, which I will probably go into a little bit of spoiler. I'll give you a warning. I'll put it on the screen. But he is kind of, um, I don't know if he's necessarily actually part of a cult, but he is tragic, basically. What am I, I don't, I don't really know how to explain him. But so in the very beginning of this book, this is not a spoiler because it's literally the first like five pages of the book. Serapio is basically being mutilated by his mother. She's carving him up. She blinds him. She sews his eyes shut. And right there I was almost like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to read this book, which maybe... See, here's the thing. I loved the rest of the book. I love Shiala. Shiala is my favorite character by far. Narampa was fun to follow. Serapio just okay let's just go into the spoilers now so I will put spoiler on the screen um okay so like I said Serapio at the very beginning of this book this book opens with his mother mutilating him like taking a knife carving him up all over his body she takes him out into the sun makes him stare at the sun until he's blind and then sews his eyelids shut and then she commits suicide. So right there I was kind of like <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this book but then we switched to Shiala and I really enjoyed Shiala like I said I really enjoyed Narampa but then we get flashbacks into Serapio's past as he's growing up. So basically Serapio is being raised to be a sacrifice and they're they're calling him like the crow god or something. It's part of a religion but it's like a cultist kind of group that follow this religion 
and they are convinced that Serapio is this god and he has to be a sacrifice. So he is raised and trained to be this sacrifice. So all of his flashbacks are basically him being abused in all different ways to make him strong or whatever. And it just wasn't for me. It was not for me at all. I, because the current, like the current day Serapio, where he's on the ship with Shiala and all this, I love that. I loved him. I thought he was a great character. But then we went back into his past and it just made me wildly uncomfortable. I don't really know. It just, it made me uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure actually while I was reading the book, I'm, I, I filmed a clip, like a car vlog clip. Okay, so I'm not doing like a vlog style anything for this, but I'm going to include this in my like recent reads where I wrap up this book because I just have to say I am 80% through Black Sun and I'm literally like this close to DNFing it. Not because there's anything wrong with the book. I'm actually quite enjoying the story and everything. I wouldn't say it's like my new favorite book or anything, but um, there's just one aspect of the story. It's where they go into like flashback history of one particular character. And it's just... I don't want to be dramatic and be like, it's, it's upsetting to me. And it's one of those things, um, I'm a very like emotional reader, so there's nothing in particular like offensive about it or anything, and there's nothing wrong with like the writing of it. I think it's very well written, it's very well done, but just like what's happening is just making me upset <laughs> and like uncomfortable. And maybe that's the you know, maybe that's what you're supposed to feel reading it, but it's to the point where I almost just don't even want to finish the book because I'm just so upset about it. I just don't like it, but you know. The driver of the truck right next to me <laughs> came as I was filming that, but um, I mean, that being said, I don't think I'm actually going to DNF the book at 80%, so I'm just going to finish it, but I don't no, depending obviously on how the next 20% or so goes. I don't know if I'll necessarily be picking up the next book. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I remember. I was I was listening to the audiobook on my way to work that day and I just I got to work and I was like, I have to talk about this. Yeah, just the state of my mind lately. I just, I've said in recent videos, like, I can't handle high stakes. I can't do, you know, really upsetting things, which I think is why I was reading so much romance, because romance is just very light and fluffy and, you know, the stakes are very low. Nobody is dying. Nobody is being tortured. Nobody is any of these things. Uh, there's none of this happening in romance books, so romance books were really easy for me to read. So after I got through the first, like, little bit of this book, the prologue or whatever it was, I was kind of doubting that I should continue, but at the same time, I, I've i heard such good things about it that I wanted to continue, and if it weren't for that one thing, I would have really enjoyed this book. I guess I'll move on. I guess that's all <laughs> I'll say about Black Sun. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna continue on with the series unless I get to a point where I feel like I can handle more of that kind of thing, um, where reviews of Fevered Star haven't really been that great anyway that I've seen. Um, there's nothing really pushing me to continue with the series. And then the next thing that I read I think was a good palette cleanser after Black Sun and my experience with Black Sun because that was Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Sutanto. She is an Indo-Chinese author and she wrote this book kind of about her family but in like a fantastical way. Obviously I don't think they killed anyone. <laughs> so <laughs> the whole premise of this book is this, uh, our main character, what's her name? Medi? 
Our main character, Medi, goes on a blind date with someone that she met online. Well, she didn't. Her mom kind of pretended to be her and met this guy online. And so she's going on this date with this guy and she accidentally kills him. So the whole book is, you have to kind of suspend your disbelief for this one. It's very ridiculous and over the top, but the whole book is her and her family trying to cover up this murder and like dispose of the body. But it's a funny book. It's not, it's not like a thriller or anything like that. It's definitely a comedy. And something she did, and she included like an author's note at the beginning of the book to explain it. She's an Indo-Chinese author, and so her family speaks Indonesian, Mandarin, and English. And there are varying levels of skill in all of these languages. So what she did, um, I think she did a good job in this book. She had said in the like author's note at the beginning of the book, I really hope this doesn't come off as offensive. This is my experience growing up in a family like this. So I think she did a really good job of like infusing the level of confusion with all of the different languages and the different people, you know, like this person speaks more Indonesian than Mandarin or English. She only really speaks English and broken Mandarin and Indonesian. This person speaks Mandarin and English. This aunt thinks she's better than everyone because she speaks really perfect English. So she kind of infused that into the story. Like she brought that lived experience into the book and I thought that was really fun. Uh, it does play, it does play a major role in the story. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a really cute book. So basically, like I said, you're following them as they're trying to figure out what to do with this dead body and also work. Her family runs like a wedding business. They do like makeup and hair and cake and flowers. And so they have like the whole well-rounded uh, like wedding business and they have a major rich client's wedding this weekend that they're trying to deal with this dead body. So it's just, like I said, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit. It's definitely kind of like over the top ridiculous. And there was a lot of times where I was like, why would you do that like that? <laughs> like, what are you doing? But it was just fun. Like it's a very fun book. So I ended up giving it three stars. I think I actually ended up giving it 3.5 stars, which this is a brand new thing for me. This is only within like the last month or two that I've started giving like partial stars. And I blame Storygraph because on Goodreads, you're basically stuck to a full star, but on Storygraph, you can actually put in partial stars. So I've started using partial stars. <laughs> so this was definitely a 3.5. I loved it. I think some things were a little cringy or a little too over the top, but then it was just a good time. Like it was just a fun time reading this book. So I enjoyed it. I recommend it if you like lighthearted murder stories <laughs> with a little bit of romance thrown in, I guess. Uh, yeah. So that was, like I said, definitely a really good palate cleanser after my experience with Black Sun, which again, Black Sun was not a bad book. It just wasn't for me. All right. So those are the last three books that I finished. I finished all of them before the end of July. So I finished a total of six books in July. I did read a lot of other things, but I actually finished six books in July. So that'll be it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books. If you've read them, if you like them, if you hate them, if you were just meh about them. If you've read Black Sun, please tell me if you had anything close to my experience with it because like I really wanted to like it and I really did like it except for that one thing just like ruined the whole thing for me. So if you had a similar experience, please let me know I'm not alone. If I am alone, that's fine. Like everybody has a different comfort level with reading. It's really not a big deal, but yeah, just let me know. So that's it for today and I will see you next time. Bye.